Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to our new video. I am Kobe and today we're going to be talking about what you can expect when you first get to Qatar. Welcome to our channel. We are the Christ fam. Well, I mean, you're also part of the Christ fam, but you know, whatever. This is at least the Christ fam YouTube channel hosted by none other than us. So let's get started. As always, before we start, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Click the bell so you guys can get notified when we post some more amazing videos. So let's get started. Um, if you do get tasked to play out here to guitar, don't expect to get a lot of sleep. Um, that is unless you can sleep on a plane, which unfortunately I cannot. Um, it's roughly about six to eight hours and it all depends on just different circumstances. Really stuff that's out of our control. Um, as an airman or something like that. Um, but once you land, um, you head on out and they put you into this kind of formation thing. Um, you're not actually formed up, but you're in rows um, and you're just facing this building. And this building is a like the start of the in-processing building. Um, so you're sitting there, you, you pretty much like hurry up and wait kind of deal. And people who are flying from Qatar to somewhere else they go first and they enter the building um, and people who are staying in Qatar follow then behind them and you go in you give them your ID card you give them your orders um, and they stamp your orders and they tell you to hold on to it hold on to those orders um, do not lose them at all costs um, because you need those orders to then when you're about to leave to out process from Qatar so they hold on to your ID and you sit down and you start filling out some paperwork um, and it's a little confusing but they try to help um, with what they can um, so you're sitting there and you're filling out all your paperwork and you got to keep in mind it does take a decent amount of time because everybody who's in the plane who was in the plane is now in that room filling out paperwork and messing with orders and IDs and all this other stuff and so once everyone gets in there they're all filling out their paperwork you then um, get shown a video and it's all about like the rules what kind of what to expect the different like uh, chaplain programs and the services or the different DFAC rules or um, just the general information that is good to know um, so once that's done you go ahead and they'll call you into what's called chocks um, and it's just a range of probably 25 to 40 people I think um, numbers I don't know but they'll call you in depending on when you got in there by your ID cards and so they'll separate you and you go outside and by that time all the luggage has been unloaded so you get all your luggage and you stand in this long line and you stand there and you wait I don't got time for this um, and I was in chalk too thankfully because what happened is then you walk over to a term the terminal and you all go like pretty much behind each other and the first chalk goes in and you have to wait obviously till the line goes down to, for the other chalk to go and you could be standing there for 10-15 minutes maybe just waiting for the other chalk to get done because what you do is what you get you have all your bags and everything and you put it on a conveyor belt it goes in and you then have to go in and you have a different pair of orders the ID card that they gave you when they called your name and you go and you hand it to like a guard when you get in and it's almost like the customs in a normal airport but you go in you give them your stuff with your right hand in Qatar and do not do not hand it with your left hand um, it's a culture thing I'm not exactly sure why um, but it's extremely rude in Qatar so hand it with your right hand um, because if you don't I've heard rumors, I'm not sure if it's true, but you could get what's called blacklisted, which means get kicked out of the country, and people would not be happy at all. You go in, give them the stuff, um, and then you end up getting your bags, you go through a metal detector, and then you shop, um, or wherever you're working at. They should send at least one person um, to come pick you up uh, from the airport and kind of drive you where you need to go. Um, You'll go to lodging, obviously that's probably one of the most important things. Um, and you'll get your your key, your dorm, your everything that you need for lodging. Um, if you 
didn't bring sheets or you don't want to buy any, they can issue you some. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing that just because you really don't know much about it. I brought my own sheets, but I've ended up buying a blanket. And so they'll take you to do that. They'll probably take you to your shop maybe briefly. That's what they did for me. They took me and the couple of guys that went with me and they took us uh, to our shop briefly just to kind of show us, introduce us to leadership. So leadership could kind of tell us what to expect. Um, and then they took us to the DFAC for the cafeteria and we got some food. We got to talk kind of with them, ask questions if we needed to. Um, more than likely on your first day, um, or you know, with all that happening, they'll take you to get your IBA, or it's also called Battle Rattle, but it's pretty much you know, your helmet and your vest with all your plates in it. Um, they do, they are starting exercises here. Um, and so you need to get all that stuff and they'll take you to get all that. Um, and then that's a lot of your in-processing for your first day. Um, some th small things I would suggest, um, they do have free Wi-Fi. Um, not only in the dorms, but they also have some at the DFAC or at Jack's, which is a hangout spot or a couple different places around base. I wouldn't use it. Um, it's extremely slow and everybody, everybody is on it. Um, it gets kind of annoying when your Wi-Fi is taking forever. I tried to use Wi-Fi when I could. Um, it was hard, obviously, you know, with all the stuff going on. Um, and I used free Wi-Fi and it took forever for things to load. Um, you can ask to go to Baptil. Um, it's a, I guess it's a Qatari Wi-Fi place and you can buy your Wi-Fi and make an account. Um, it is a little better. Um, it's still not amazing, uh, but it's, it's a lot better than the free Wi-Fi. You also have the opportunity and you don't have to do this the first day. I would definitely do it within the first couple days of being here at least, is you can get a little Wi-Fi puck, which is like a just box. Pretty much it's like a Wi-Fi little mini router and you buy that and you continue to buy data onto it. Um, so they have different plans and stuff like that um, that I'm not 100% sure because I didn't do that. Uh, the other option that I did do was you can get a SIM card and as long as your phone is unlocked, um, which mine thankfully is, um, you can have the SIM card inserted and you buy that and then you can get the different SIM card plans that they have. Um, I got, um, I believe it's like seven gigs um, that last 28 days. Um, so whether at the end of your 28 days or at the end of seven gigs, they'll send you a reminder text when you're getting close to either one of those dates. Um, they will send you a text, let you know, hey, you need to recharge it here soon because it's about to you know, go away. So you go ahead and you buy more data, you add more time, whatever it may be. Um, another thing with the Wi-Fi, you, it's not like unlimited. It's slower, like the plan I have is 80 gigs um, for with, with like five megabytes a second. So it's not great. That is like, I wanna say around 60 bucks a month. Every month you, you renew it. I don't know if they remind you because I haven't been here that long yet, but I would definitely do it before the end of that month rotation because any gigs that you don't use, they roll over into the next month. So, I mean, you guys know how it works, but if I don't use 20 gigs of the 80 gigs on the first month, the next month I buy it, instead of having 80, I'll have 100, um, which definitely helps. Um, if you're into gaming or stuff like that, you probably want to buy something that's a little faster, a little bit more gigs. Um, but yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you would do us a huge favor, again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell for some more post notifications when we release some more amazing videos. Um, and until next time, we'll see you guys soon. See ya.